Well, hello there. This video is going to walk you through the process of choosing a URL, signing up for a hosting plan, purchasing both, and then installing WordPress on your new account. Very exciting. Uh, we are going to be using, as indicated in class and on the other video, which you hopefully have just watched, a company called Reclaim Hosting. This company hosts URLs and websites that are connected to those URLs. And we are going to be installing the content management system WordPress, which is the industry standard. And we're going to learn how to use it this semester. Very exciting. All right. So when you go to reclaimhosting.com, you click on sign up. And you are going to choose, uh, you are going to choose the $30 a year uh, option. And you could imagine this is like renting an apartment for $30 a year. You're just renting a space on their server. Uh, you still will have to purchase the URL as well. So I'm going to click sign up. And this page here, the student personal plan, is where you are going to be choosing uh, the URL that you want. So for example, at one point I purchased Bill Wolf SJU. And I cannot purchase it now. I'm going to check the availability. And you can say it already exists. So I'm going to try a different domain at this time. Uh, whatever URL you choose, it should be associated with your name. It shouldn't be like chocolatechippancakes.com because you like chocolate chip pancakes. This is a professional site. Uh, it's going to be a site that hopefully you will keep throughout your time in the major. Students who do are always glad that they do. Uh, it's going to be a URL that you are going to be using in web design as well. So it's good to find something that is related to you, connected to you, and that's going to show you as a professional because students do use these websites that they create for showing off portfolio items. They use them all the time. It's a big important thing for them. So uh, I would recommend uh, either .com, .net. Uh, if you have to use .org, it's really like I have it for my own personal site, but I would recommend using .com or .net and finding something that is going to work. So because .com is taken, I'm going to choose .net. And I'm just sort of going through the motions uh, at this time. So I'm going to click Check Availability. Woohoo! Look at that. It's available. I'm going to click Continue. Very exciting. All right, so now it says here that I'm purchasing a hosting plan. Uh, oddly enough, it does not include right here the $15 for the URL. It's a little misleading. I wish that it actually did. So uh, you're going to be charged $30 annually. If you want to purchase three years worth of this domain and just have it for nearly the rest of your time in the, in the in, at college, uh, you can. and do that at this moment. But if you choose not to, just the $30, that's okay. I'm going to click check out. Uh, this is fine. You want this ID protection. What this does is it protects people from seeing your address and phone number that is associated with your account. And this is a good idea to have and to continue to have that. Click continue. And so now you'll see here the uh, student plan, which is the $30, uh, the domain registration for your URL that you're purchasing for one year is $15, so it's a total of $45 that you'll be paying for this. Okay, so if you're a new customer, you have to put in your information, uh, payment, you could pay by PayPal or credit card, click the terms of service, I have read that right here, check them out, it's fine, and then click complete order. Okay. I'm not going to do that because I don't need to. I already have a URL, but you should. Okay. And I'm going to pause this for just a second and recollect where we go to the beginning. So, okay, we're back. Uh, once you have purchased your URL and you should go and check for a confirmation email, could be in your spam area, but you should definitely go check for that and click on it. Because if you don't, in a couple of weeks, Reclaim Hosting will just shut down uh, your URL. You won't have the ability to see it. So it's important to go ahead and, and do that. Okay. Once you've done that, um, and even before you click on the confirmation email, you should be able to log in 
to your space. So you would come back to the Reclaim Hosting front page and click on Client Area Login. And you'll log in with the information that you've chosen for your account. I want to say that it's particularly important to write down your passwords or keep track of your passwords somewhere. You can use a password uh, um, monitoring service if that's something you prefer. But you're going to have a lot of passwords as a comm student, and it's important to keep track of all of them so that you're not constantly trying over and over and over again. It also be, would be consistent with the emails that you're using uh, for these. Okay, so you're going to log in once you've remembered those, and hey, there it is. Um, and this is your client area. As a person who has an account with Reclaim Hosting, you have a client area where you are able to control certain things relating to your account, submit support uh, tickets, which is always very important. They're extremely responsive, which is great. There's a knowledge base, which is, which is helpful, but support is really, really great. Uh, you can see all your domains that you've got right here. You have two active domains. If you have any invoices due, active accounts, and, and so on. So in order to install WordPress, which is what we're going to be doing primarily in the back end right now, we're going to click on the C panel, which is the control panel portion of your account. And this is starting to give you access to the back end of the server uh, where you're working with things on the server. And I encourage you to explore this a little bit, but not too much. Um, if you have questions about what we're seeing back here, I'm more than happy to uh, address them. Um, for the moment, we are going to be installing WordPress, which, as I said, is a content management system, which we're going to be using to, to create your websites and your blog that's associated with that website. And you'll see that because it's so popular and everybody's using it, uh, you are you'll, it's going to be right here on the top left. So you go ahead and click WordPress. And I will click on install this application, which is completely free. You do not have to pay for it. Now, I do want to make a distinction here. Uh, we are going to be installing uh, WordPress on our own servers, which means we are going to be installing the version of WordPress, which is known as WordPress.org. This is the version that gives you complete control over what's going on on your site. You can customize just about anything that you want to. There is a different version of WordPress called WordPress.com, and it's very easy to confuse the two of these. They are very different. WordPress.com is not hosted on your own server. It is hosted by WordPress. It is limited in terms of the themes, in terms of the functionalities of the site that you can do. That is why we uh, use the WordPress.org version. So when you're looking for information, if you're doing that on your own time later in the semester about WordPress, you need to make sure you're focusing on WordPress.org and not WordPress.com. Okay. So now we're going to go through and we're going to do the installation. We have to find your URL and you should see your URL, your domain right here. The other, another word for URL is domain. You'll see those, those are interchangeable and it is right there. Uh, I am not installing it on Bill Wolf SJU. I use that for other purposes, but I did create something called a subdomain, which I am going to be using in this class. And you are going to actually be creating a subdomain later in the semester. Uh, for your multimedia project story, uh, at least in my section. Uh, if somebody from another section is watching this, you might not be doing that. Anyway, <laughs> you're going to remove this to optional directory because we want it installed in your main directory. In other words, when people go to your website, you want them to see your WordPress site. Um, you don't want it hidden in some other optional directory. Okay. So we're going to install the version that they recommend, which is the most recent. English language, yes. Accept the license, sure. Uh, you want to be update to any new version. That is, uh, anytime a new version of WordPress comes out, you're going to have it updated automatically. That way you don't have to worry about any security issues. Um, I tend to not update plugins. I like to do that myself. Sometimes plugins can cause problems when they are updated automatically, and I like to be there to see that, see what is going on. And we're going to learn what plugins are, if you don't know what those are at the moment. Uh, 
also, I do not like to automatically update themes because, again, I like to be able to control that. If you do any customizing to your code, for example, later on, once we learn how to use things, an updated theme will erase those custom code updates. It's happened to me in the past, and then you have to go back and recreate everything, and that's a bit of a pain in the neck. So um, please, I, I tend not to do that. I do create a backup automatically. Okay. Now here is when you're going to choose an administrator username. This is the main username that you, for yourself. I tend to think admin is a perfectly good admin username for an administrator. So, and then the password should be something that is strong. Should not be a simple little password. You do not want people hacking into this space. Okay, you want this to be complicated. Um, if you, you can have them generate a password for you, uh, but if you do that, you got, and with your other passwords, just need to make sure that you're maintaining it and remember what it is. Uh, part of being a comm student and a responsible digital media user is maintaining passwords and understanding what they are and not replicating them across sites. You could use a password hosting service or a password management service, for example, like 1Password. Um, but it's up to you how you're going to do this, but I would recommend making sure that you're going to find something you remember. Uh, the blog name should be something relating to yourself. You could just put, you know, your name. I'll put Bill Wolf, but I'm going to put, uh, you know, Bill Wolf's Com 200 site, just so I can distinguish it from my other ones. You could just write your name, Jane Doe, Jack Smith, whatever it is. And the tagline is just a fun little line that you could add uh, if you would like. And you know, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that we can see it easier. So I'm going to say, for all my portfolio items, you're much more creative than I am, and you'll choose something more creative. These can always be changed, so it's not set in stone. And then yes, limit failed login attempts. No, do not enable. Automatically manage, and then click install. And it's processing. It takes you back to your uh, Installtron area. You can see I have a lot of these sites. Here is mine that is installing, and we can go do, 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 do. Nobody wants to hear me singing. So we'll just wait a couple minutes. Really, it doesn't take very long. Get a drink, kind of relax a little bit. And here is, you can see that the website is up and running. If I want to see that it works, I can open in a new tab and see my new website there. That is very exciting. This is a default theme that they provide for you, um, and that's great. Um, now, they also provide you with the admin email so that you can get to the dashboards area of your site. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to bring me to a login page. I'm automatically logged in and because of going through the site. But if you normally go to this URL, whatever it is now, slash WP admin or WP login, also, it will bring you to a login screen. And you would log in with the username and password you just created, not the Reclaim hosting one, the one you created for WordPress. It's important to keep those separate. And we're going to explore this dashboard area considerably. We're going to learn about posts and pages and customizing the themes and the appearance and plugins and all sorts of uh, wonderful, wonderful things that we're going to be working on and looking at uh, uh, this semester. So. Uh, good luck with the install. If you have any questions, email me, or if you have a different comp professor and you're watching this, email that professor. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your websites online. Have a great day, and we'll see you soon.